Hello and welcome to today's episode of Secret Suppliers where I take you around some of my favorite suppliers and this week is lighting. So today I'm actually not going to take you to three suppliers but four and these really are my favorite four lighting suppliers so that's why I'm going to walk you through what I've got and each one is quite different which is quite nice because you get a range of different lighting fixtures to have a look at. First up is Ochre Lighting. Now this is a really lovely British brand and their showroom is on the Pimlico Road, again one of my favourite roads, so do go and have a look at all the different places there. Um, there's also one of my favourite fabric suppliers, Della Conia, so it really is a lovely place to be. A lot of the lighting at Ochre is almost veering towards the modern side of lighting from my perspective. And although there is this sort of 19th century, 18th century feel to a lot of the lights, they do um, look classic contemporary to me, but on the modern side of that, if that can make any sense. To me, I think the big difference with Ochre um, and the reason I say I would pick them for certain projects is because actually they do have these lights that they build. So, you know, they, they can be as large as you like or as small as you like. And actually you can sort of grow them in size by adding all these um, smaller lights to create something much bigger. And I think it really looks stunning in projects where it looks like you've sort of got this sea of lighting that flows through a space. Another really lovely thing with Oka is a lot of what they do in their showroom is really displaying how that lighting will look in situ in certain areas. And actually their showroom is quite minimalist in the way it's laid out, but it gives you space to really be able to feel and see and be inspired by how a piece of lighting or a decorative lighting will look in a space. Okay, so next up is Collier Webb. Now, this is a much more contemporary, um, sort of I would almost say formal lighting supplier. And one of my favorite aspects of Collier Webb is the fact that they have wireless lighting. They supply some of the most prestigious hotels and restaurants in the world, and they have this incredibly beautiful wireless um, small mini lamps that you can put on small tables, side tables, and they're just absolutely beautiful. I love the idea of wireless lamps. I don't know why we don't do more wireless lamps, but this is definitely a place where they do them really, really well. Um, their lighting is very, very smart, and for me feels sort of very formal and luxurious. There's also another really lovely aspect of Collier Webb, and that's that they do other things that perhaps not everybody knows about. So in fact, they have some really incredible hardware, hardware that you uh, would find very difficult to come across anywhere else. But also they have these outstanding mirrors. Um, there are, they have some lovely convex mirrors that again, make really big statements in any space. Okay, so the next space is in Chelsea Harbour. Now, lots of people know about Chelsea Harbour. It's a fantastic place full of design companies and different suppliers and different manufacturers. So it's a fantastic place to go, um, no matter whether you are an interior designer or just someone looking for different furniture and different fabrics and different design pieces. But in terms of lighting, two of my favorite suppliers at the Harbour are Wired Lighting and Bella Figura. Now Bella Figura I will start with. This is somewhere that I've always loved and frankly every time I go in the lighting in here just gets better and better. I've been really lucky because coming in here I get to speak to Ross, one of the directors, and I'm going to leave you to listen to some of our conversation about the type of lighting that he's got in his showroom and he's going to be giving you some really great tips on how to use his lighting and other lights in general and how to place them. 
when we walk in, we do run towards a light, being aesthetic yeah, lovers. Yeah, of course. And your lighting is so stunning in Thank here that you. it's difficult not to, not to run towards all of them and want them all. But there are things that you have to consider even when you're thinking of buying um, lights and walking into a showroom. And, you know, this is a brilliant example, frankly, a beautiful light, but also a great example of how it is at a certain height at which it allows me to feel like I can see it even whilst I'm talking to you, which is lovely, because sometimes I feel like lights are slightly too far up to yeah. the point where you can't really see the light and it's lost when you're sitting down, but you can see it walking in. And I love the idea of being able to see it whilst you're seated also. Um, so tell me about your chandelier well, rule. You're, you're absolutely right. I see so often with people when they hang pictures, it's, yeah. it strikes me nuts because they hang them so often too high or yeah. too symmetrical. But I think with chandeliers, um, you've got to take into account that it can be lower than your other chandeliers and other rooms, because one, you're not walking underneath it, because it's, because it's over over a table. And also it's nice to have that variance in height, because as you know, most rooms of today are completely open plan. You know, the center is the center point of the house. Yeah. And then with one swoop of an eye, you, 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 you cast your eye on the seating area or the drawing room area, the dining, sort yeah. of the, the central island in the kitchen and then your dining area. So you've got those zones. So in the dining area or indeed even in the, if, if it's going to go over an island in, in the center of the kitchen, it's nice to just have it slightly, slightly lower. I and think people so. say how how low, but I think if you stand up and you uh, yeah, it's no and you're higher okay than there. 190 from the floor, two meters, and if you want to say cheers, you want to make yeah. eye contact. And so but I, I love that and I love that's I, a big I love factor. that. I love the cheers. I love yeah. the cheers rule, guys. Um, but I also, I do like the fact that I can see it as I'm speaking to you. And I don't think people take that into consideration. That actually, it's quite nice yeah. if you've gone to the extent of designing and having something as beautiful as this. Why not see it whilst you're seated as well as when you walk in? Absolutely. Um, but but other than so other than a. a a place where the lights over the table what would you say when it comes to bedrooms I always tell people to put it closer to the end of the bed so you're not yeah. standing up and bashing your head for ob obvious, for obvious, obvious reasons, reasons. Um, but, um, you know, unless you otherwise, want to swing on it unless you want to swing on it <laughs> <laughs> but in the bedroom you have to take into account that you know you, you are you know drying your hair towels are being yeah. sort of buzzed around in a rush, taking your clothes off quickly, um, stretching. So you need to think of the height in the bedroom. It's not to be too yeah. too low, otherwise it'll it'll blatantly get 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 damaged. Yeah, absolutely. And also the weights, which I think people don't think about too often. That you mm. you know, if you're coming, not necessarily as an afterthought, but if you if you're to hang a ceiling light, a pendant, a chandelier, whatever you wish to call it. Um, following you know following the construction you're going to have a problem if you haven't thought about the weight Absolutely. And, and, and what and it can what the ceiling can handle and you really don't want an only fools and horses moment no. do you not <laughs> not at all so people really do underestimate um the weight of these chandeliers yeah. you know if, you, if you've got a big room you're going to need a good one meter by 120 chandelier yeah. and these can be up to anything up to 40 50 kg 60 Which kg is huge. So you need to do the internal work on the beams and work out where it's going to hang and make sure that you've got a really strong support beam there that's, gonna, that's going to take the weight. And you want to get all that messy work out, out of the way. way before your carpets go down and, and, yeah. and anything else goes, goes in. But your, so your lights here, presumably, you can take them up and down so that's, that they could be yeah. bespoke, depending yeah. on you know what kind of drop you wanted. But in terms of weights, is that something you can engineer or is it something yes. that actually you need to know right from the beginning you well we we can accommodate four lower weights yeah. and we do that by using this beautiful material called called lucite which yeah. is a lot lighter than glass yeah. um, and also we've got this other lucite tile here and this sort of first of all kicked off lucite was to do with projects that we did on some beautiful yachts. Now yeah. yachts are all governed by it's weight. It's always the way, isn't it? And also on a on a on a beautiful yacht, you don't want crystal 
You don't no. want crystal Bashing around. Jing, jangling you know, yeah. around while you're whizzing around the, yeah. the, uh, the Ibiza Islands. So that was, that's, oh, that's Monaco, where you darling. can sort of combat if you do have weight restrictions yeah. in your ceiling. And we have parchment, um, sort of paper chandeliers that we use yeah, as well. Yeah, they're lovely. We're going to have a little tour around. And generally a lot of our chandeliers are, are low because you know, they have a low height, 20 yeah. to 30 centimetres, and then you can have your rod to however you want it made. Yeah. And the reason is because generally, particularly in the modern day homes that are being built you know, in the UK, our ceiling heights aren't very good. No. So we can certainly get the diameters uh, for these big rooms, but we keep them at a low height. Yeah, so which makes sense. Again, because most modern houses now are 250, 260, yeah. they're not like sort of the old rectories and stately yeah. homes yeah, yeah, where, yeah. You, where you've got you know, meters to play with. No, absolutely. So that also keeps keeps the weight down because they are quite quite um, low in height. It's very distracting talking to you in here because yeah. uh, my eye keeps flipping to, I to that, a I light want that, thinking, I want oh my God, I didn't see that. Um, so I, I'm trying to concentrate, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm with you. Um, the only other point I think I wanted to mention from a um, technical point of view, um, as it were, is that actually when something else I think people should consider is when you are um, walking into a space like this, A, come in because these lights really, you, you just, you can't judge these lights unless you oh, see them in the flesh. They you. are absolutely thank exquisite. You so much. Um, but also, when you walk into a showroom like this, you know, you're sort of taken aback by a chandelier and its size, and you immediately think, no, 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 don't change the size, that's what I want, exactly that. But you do have to be careful because you may not have a room that works with this kind of a size, so to be really careful about sizes. and. I'm assuming that's something you can also advise on, mm. given that yeah. you know, once you know the size of the room, that's something you can give your kind of expertise it, it's, on. It's always a hard one to work out when I haven't actually been to site, yeah. um, because there's all sorts of things to consideration when you're picking the size or the height or the width of a chandelier. You know, there may be a large painting, there may be, uh, you know, which you want to see, there may be yeah. a, a beautiful window where you want, don't want it to be sort of interrupted by a chandelier. So there are yeah. lots there are, there are lots of factors but but generally there is there is a, a, a rule of sort of my thumb that I can work <laughs> out. So if, if, if you're you know if I have a plan of the room I can say right yeah that's gonna be a one meter diameter yeah. or it's gonna be a one twenty diameter. And it's pretty much the same with dining room tables and islands. This one's three meters. Yeah. So we have a two metre chandelier above it. So yeah, you know you want works. a good sort of fifty centimetre clearance either, either way. end. So yeah. there are little things that I can help and advise on, but there's also you and your skill you can draw yeah. it up, which that also uh, you know, yeah. helps. But there there are lots there are lots of factors. Yeah, and I I mean it's one thing I I'd always say, take know what the rule is, take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. And then throw it away. Yeah. Um, no, but I. But you know, in all honesty, aside from, aside from that, you know, do I think it's also really important for the designer to say, you know, what I want to make a real statement of this. So yes, I know what the rule is, yeah. and as long as I'm not, I'm making sure nobody's crashing into it. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I can go bigger because this is where I want to make my statement, and I think you can do that. But you do need to know what the rule is no, first, totally, totally. so that you know you're not sort of stepping on stepping on toes. Finally, we are off to Wired Lighting. Now, this is a very bespoke company that does pretty much anything you can think of. They have some ready pieces in the showroom for you to have a look at, be inspired by, and these pieces are simply exquisite. They have, in all honesty, one of my all-time favorite wall lights and chandeliers. Um, they literally have a chandelier in here that would be my dream chandelier. So one day um, I'll be back buying it myself. But for now, I'm showing it off to you guys and I really hope you love this place. It really is a spectacular lighting supplier um, and the detail in which they go into for not just the finishing of every chandelier, but in terms of the sizing and the weight is really quite impressive. And it's somewhere that if you can visit and you do have the option of creating something bespoke, you should go and see.
I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Secret Suppliers. And if you did enjoy it, please do subscribe and don't forget to visit your suppliers. It is so much better than picking from a brochure or online. And as easy as that may be, there is nothing like the real thing. And these really are my favorite floor, oh, floor, my favorite floor lighting suppliers. Um, and these really are my favorite.